Welcome back to the Hustle and Horse Power channel. <laughs> Great intro. <laughs> Great intro, lady gangster. Hey guys, welcome back to the Hustle and Horse Power channel. Uh, Maddie over here found some uh, steaks on sale earlier uh, earlier this week. So it is Sunday night and we decided to throw some steaks on the smoker. And uh, we got a little bit carried away. So the steaks are a little bit overcooked. Like they're a solid medium, medium well, and like overcooked. I like them at least medium rare. Like on a smoker, you could even have them a little bit rarer than that. And Rex isn't complaining though. Rex ain't complaining. We even got him his own little, little scraps there. But the problem is, like, I like the fat. She doesn't like the fat. And like, so me and Rex are over here, like, boom, 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 fighting it. over pieces of scrap. Fighting over, uh, fighting over, over the fatty pieces. But yeah, so uh, we're uh, we're making progress. It's Sunday night. I was hoping to have the natural born hustler to a roller in the morning. Like, by tomorrow morning, that's not going to happen. But well, we're not far off. We're not overly far off. So, it's, uh, I'm going to work all night. Because, uh, I missed my deadline. But I'm going to see how close to my deadline I can get. Um, I'm going to work on some, probably, I don't know if I want to whip out the tubing bender and stuff like that today. Or tonight. But I might. And uh bend up the floor, the main floor bars. To tie into the factory frame rails and stuff like that and uh we got a lot of stuff <laughs> he doesn't like making eye contact with cameras no he doesn't but he's patiently waiting he's waiting so uh yeah so we'll have that up here shortly and we'll give you guys an update in the morning we'll add it into this video but i might accept a down payment on the truck and trailer i think i'm going to um it's not something we need at the moment i don't absolutely absolutely need it and uh it sucks to give up like that childhood dream kind of thing but if we sell that i'll probably be on the hunt for like a mini split or something like that and uh probably try to buy back my old uh 34 foot uh vino's tag trailer See if I can buy that back, even if I have to pay a little extra money to purchase that back. But, uh... If not, we're going to be in the market for a 36 or a 34 foot Yeah, 34, 36 foot triaxle trailer. Preferably something with the extra height, because, like, we got to have all our merchandise and stuff with us. And then I'll probably buy a mini split for the, for the spool bus. And we'll go back to rocking the spool bus. I love that damn thing. It's treated us well. We put, like, 70... 5,000 plus miles on that thing towing all mm -hmm. over the country for a couple years and uh, the toter home is uh, It's a godsend to oh, me attention. myself and I Come on, oh. um, It's a uh, it's very important for me, but uh, I'd probably rig up a bathroom and stuff like that in the 36 foot trailer if we could buy that back Just do like a little front section in there or whatever and yeah. uh, just little stuff like that. But, it's not um, we're not really, like, living on the road traveling like we were last year. Um, so, or like, like it's, we would have been doing this year. Yeah, but it's, it's just going to get us to and from the races. We might spend a weekend here and there, here and there, but we're not going to be on the road like we were before. At least for a little bit. Yeah. Until we win, uh, until we win a little bit of money. Then we could go back and we could get back to, uh, making good on my promises to, uh, help out some of the next generation the racers like free of charge go help them out for the weekend whether it whether it's uh helping them on their suspension stuff or motor stuff or putting a motor in their car or you know piecing something together whatever it is you know what I mean? so i want to make good on that deal that was uh that was gonna be cool like mm -hmm. being on the road and racing on the weekends and then spending a couple days during the week helping out some young kids and stuff like that that would have been uh that would have been cool and it would have been good for the social media stuff too kind of like uh the Chain of Love song. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm serious. I know. Spreading, like, positivity and, like, encouragement and stuff like that. And hopefully other people get the desire to do it as well. Yeah. That would have been cool. We still yeah. might be able to do it on a smaller scale or more local stuff. But we do what we can to help out the next generation racers and do, uh, help, uh, help do the sport good. Mm -hmm. I guess you could say. Like, for us, like, I did this stuff before, like, 
I don't want to say before social media, but before, like, before social media was, like... A thing to do. Yeah, kind of thing. So, social media started out with, like, just getting, keeping in contact with a fr- uh, family that was, like... Out of town and stuff. Out of town, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now it's evolved into being something totally different, and... Now, now it's a tool to be used, and... Yeah. I missed out on a lot of that, and we'd be in a lot better, uh, position if I would have gotten on that earlier, or... B, they didn't work so many overtimes and stuff like that, so I could have gotten into, had time to do the social media stuff. Like, I was always, like, literally, like, get done working on the car and, like, literally run into the, run into the house, wash up real quick and shoot to work or go to work yeah. off pretty dirty kind of thing. Um, but <clears throat> it is what it is. You were going to work just to get dirty anyway, so it wasn't like... Yeah. But I never, uh, I did the social media stuff, but, like, a Facebook post or like an Instagram post is way different than a video cuz the um, the the reach that you get and like there's a there's a couple of big things that like could have happened like like our like the former dirty 30 um was like this close to being on the cover of Hot Rod magazine um I had a couple big uh opportunities that I guess I denied <laughs> to try to keep on doing the racing ourselves before so we didn't have to go work and f- like work for a big team. So we still could see like what we are capable of ourselves on by ourselves, and uh, some other different things. But it is what it is. I like the fact that like we've done it our way. Yeah, you don't have to like. And there's like, and like if we make it like, we know we didn't take any shortcuts or change who we were to try to try to make it kind of thing. But, like, I don't know. For me, like, I had a conversation at the track the other day. And he's like, they basically said, well, isn't winning, like, isn't, uh, isn't this or that, uh, enough, uh, enough to do it? I said, like, no. Because, like, I don't know. If you want to, like, you could, the road, not the road, you could be successful a whole lot easier than being successful trying to do it like a certain way and like staying true to yourself right like everyone like okay like if you want to do a u-turn you're driving down the road right and it says no u-turn you could go and make that u-turn and be back going and like switching directions like that right or you could go drive up to the next exit and get off and do your loop-de-loop and come back around and like it's like 99 percent of the time you could do that you turn and never get caught and like no one knows the difference, but... Or won't get into an accident. Or won't or get whatever. into the accident. But, at the same time... You know that you should... You, you knew you took a U-turn. shortcut. Yeah. Or you knew you you knew you knew cut someone off to try to get in front of them. And, like, I don't know, that's just not... I... Like, when we were talking to Jake at the track yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how, like, we both, like... Winning is cool. Like, I want to win. But I also want to beat you. Like... It's a different type of thing. Like You don't want to win. I don't want to win because I screwed you. I want to win because I beat you. And, like, of course, racing's racing, and not everyone's on their A game all the time. And, like, parts failures happen. We've been on the wrong side of that more than times than I'd like to admit. But at the same time, like, I want to, like, I want to win knowing that we were one of the best on the property that day. Yeah. I don't want to win knowing, like, oh, we jumped the light or we... We got lucky here, or we got lucky there, or this or that. Like, I don't know, that's just, that's just not, that's just not fulfilling to me. And, like, that kind of, like, I don't know, it's taking the shortcut. And there's no, there's not the same reward in it. Like, being in the winter Circle's picture is cool, but at the same time, like, knowing you honestly, you had a program that was better than other people, and then you, like, made rounds and did well, that's one thing versus, you know, bum rushing someone or screwing someone over or this or that and yeah but i don't know what do you think end this video and get back to work yeah i will finish dinner finish dinner okay we'll go finish dinner and then we'll get back to work we'll catch y'all soon what kind of shenanigans are you guys getting into well you actually just went to go get the phone so you could video the shenanigans. But 
we don't know if we're gonna have the motor back in time and unfortunately this car they made illegal for digger die and that's the main race that we're trying to get ready for so um the main goal is to get the natural born hustler ready for digger die i i still personally want to run this car just to not prove people wrong to it but to prove to myself that like actually like quantify I want to run this car a couple times without a bent crankshaft in it so that we can see how fast it actually is and see that like the car works like I had intentions yeah. to and it showed some pretty good promise on some test hits and stuff like that but unfortunately like you know it was, it was we were having engine issues so uh it was a it was a fresh crankshaft that we got back and uh turns out uh Pete Harrell at HED found out that that crank was bent five thousands so um That's a lot which is a lot yeah especially at like eight thousand rpm so it was taken out main or some rod rod bearings and stuff like that so um i was trying to figure out like that's not something you can really measure because you got to compare them from this one to this one to this one to this one to see the the deviation i guess you could say so fortunately enough the mains were good the mains were all in line but the rod rod journals we're off a total of five thousandths between the four rod journals, because um, like on a big block Chevy, it's one three five seven on the driver's side, and uh, two four six eight on the passenger side. So one and two uh, share a rod journal, three and four, or no? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, three and four share a rod journal, five and six share a rod journal, and seven and eight share a rod journal. That means that those. Um, are connected at on 90 the crank, yeah. on, on, the, on the crank on the same rod journal so and that's for a big block that's for a big block they're, they're all all v8s are basically the same they just number them differently so if you do uh like if you do a chevy and full ford um like uh ignition or firing order they're exactly the exactly the same and some people are gonna think i'm nuts when i say this but they're actually the same um the numbers are just uh numbered differently but the position is the, the position is actually the same so it's still this cylinder then that cylinder then this cylinder blah 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 they run the same order uh they're just numbered differently so a big block or like a chevy and a ford uh firing order are different cylinder numbers but it's actually physically the same cylinder that that's firing at the same time of course there's some variations of that depending on like the cam and whatever efficiencies but yeah so we're taking this car apart because um, we're a month out from dig or die. Basically just over a month out. Yeah. Five five weeks from making that race. Um, there's, we should, we'll have the motor back before then. But uh, for the one or two races that we'll have the motor back that we could run this car, it's just not, eh. But I still want to run this car. Um, of course, this is Turbo John's car. Uh, we just modified it and stretched it out and stuff like that. But we're taking the front suspension off right now, and we're going to uh, be throwing it up underneath underneath the natural born hustler, so we can wor work on our um, shock shock placement. Shock, shock placement, our four bar setup um, for the steering. Yeah, mod all that. modify the mid plate to put the steering column where I need it and stuff like that. So we're stripping all that stuff off. Of course, it's all modular, and you'll see uh, we're like. I mean, we're like 10 minutes into, 20 minutes into taking this thing apart. Maybe, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes into taking this thing apart. And in the next couple minutes, we'll have like the whole front suspension off of this car. And in another 30 minutes, you could toss all the factory suspension back on the car. So um, we're in the trailer here. This tra trailer, I believe I'm going to be accepting a down payment in the next couple days on the truck and trailer. And uh, that kind of breaks my heart a little bit. But... Um, yeah, we wouldn't okay. be selling if we didn't lose the natural or the homegrown hustler that just is what it is we'd be out traveling and racing right now but the situation that we're in so the circumstances is, like this is it, it doesn't make sense right now for us to have the truck and trailer it just so i love it i mean the goal is to eventually when the time's right get get another setup get, get back into a setup yeah. like this or hell, I'd I'd love to buy the setup back, and <laughs> when uh, if if things change, but um, 
it just uh it just makes sense to uh to be in a to cruise around the spool bus again i love that damn bus it's treated us well and uh, i'm gonna try to buy back my old uh, 36 foot trailer if possible if the guy's willing to sell it and uh we'll go back to our reg regular tag trailer and the school bus and uh get back to racing so right now we're ripping this apart and uh I appreciate it, guys. I appreciate everyone that likes and subscribes. Yep. Me, Snacks, and Lady Gangster are going to get this all taken apart real quick. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back at it shortly. On something? I just broke my toenail. Your small one? Uh, yeah, I stubbed it. Oh, I see it. Oh. Oh my goodness! I guess we gotta call the tow truck. Blood red toenail. That is no that is nail polish. Touch it. I agree. Come here, sweet heads. What happened? I stubbed my toe. Oh my god. Guys, I think we're gonna have to call a tow truck. <laughs> Hey, if you let it bleed, your toenail polish will look like it'll match the rest of your toast. Let it bleed. No. Come on. Let it, it'll be funny. Let it bleed for a little mm, bit. That hurts. Let it bleed for a minute. <laughs> that seemed like it hurt. Hey. I've had worse. Do you want me I to get my... Grip on hey. my big toe where, like, the cuticle is. Want me to get my there. wound sealed? No, it's not that bad. So you want to hear... Did I ever tell you a story about me riding my brother's bicycle? My neighbor's got a brand new car and they parked it in this, uh, like, the middle of the sidewalk. <laughs> no. Did you hit it? Okay, hold the camera. Ready? We got, we got to tell a little I story here. I meant to get the, so, the tripod, but. So, Sorry. I, I stole, or, like, I borrowed my brother's bicycle, right? And, like, two houses down, bought a brand new car. And I was riding my bicycle, and I went to slow down and pedal backwards, right? But this bicycle didn't pedal backwards. It was like a BMX bike, right? So like, so it, it just spun. It just, it just spun. Zing, right? And I was like, crap! I don't know what to do. It had hand brakes, but like, I didn't know what to do with more hands because I was a little kid. So I put my feet down, and right between like my neighbor's house and the neighbor two doors down, it went uphill, and there's a big lip because like in, the side in New York, right? So there's a big heave. So I put my put my feet down like this, and like my, my foot my foot flipped over on the crack. And I was like, I don't want to hit the car. So I kept my foot down and it ripped off half of my toenail, right? So I go to the ER or the emergency room and they literally go in there with pliers. They put needles like this long, literally like in my toe this way, right? Like, <laughs> in, like in the lengthwise, right? And they literally sat there with pliers and stuff like that and had to rip off the other half of the toenail. So this was like, this was like late summer, early fall. Well, the leaves fall, right? And... I was like walking home from school on my crutches and I like would run, 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 hop. I was in elementary school, right? So I'd run, run, run and I'd see how far I could hop. I'd extend them like real long. And I'd You'd like pogo. And I'd pogo, right? Well, there were like it rained like the night before so the leaves were wet. And I go to pogo and I, I'm like way the hell up in the air and the crutches slipped out from under me. I came down and gave myself a concussion. <laughs> I like rattled myself. And I still had like at least a half mile walk back home. From the was school. It, oh, it was the elementary school around the corner from the house? Yeah, so like, I, yeah. like, I was like, so like, I'm a little kid, right? Like, I'm like, I'm only five foot two now, so like, back then, <laughs> not really, but I was like, probably like this big, but like the crutches, I can make them like this big, right? So like, your feet would literally be like this high off the ground, so like, if you've got, oh, that's... you pull yourself and go, Phew, and go flying, right? Yeah. And I could like jump like probably, probably eight or ten feet or something like that. I could be airborne for, well, I landed on my head because my, my crutch slipped out. And I was like, ah! Boom! I gave myself a concussion. 
but luckily we got the 911 on speed dial and the tow truck's gonna come to pick up Maddie. But I'm telling you, just let it bleed. It'll match the colors. We didn't even know you lost a toenail until you cleaned out the blood. I know. <laughs> I'll be fine. I know you'll be fine. <laughs> Caden's hunched over like the hunchback in Notre Dame. Are you going to turn around? Yep. Just messing with you. Having to make every step. I'm just gonna... I don't know. I'm going to have to go all the way around. We have to, I think. What? You, you can't jackass. <laughs> all right, come on. <laughs> I forgot you got 300 pounds of the... That's like 293 pounds. Let's go. Yeah. I'm saying you got 300 pounds. Come on! <laughs> Do you think we should make Mandy go the last half distance? Yeah, your turn! Get up in your stock pole and... I love you. All by yourself. Turn. Should have hooked it up to my car or something like that. 